I was recruited in the FBI in 1968 when I was living in Ketchum, Idaho, about a mile from Sun Valley, Idaho, okay. and I was attending the University of, at Brigham Young University, attending college, just finishing my BA degree. Okay. And at that time, I, I just got back from a, a two and a half year church mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or the Mormon Church in Uruguay. And, so, and three of my uh, friends from the mission there had got their appointments into the FBI. And they got me interested, and I, I then put my application in and, and entered the FBI on July 22nd, 1968. When I first got in the FBI, it was during the Vietnam War, 1968. Many of the young men were going over the hill to avoid becoming one of those grim statistics of the 58,000 that died in Vietnam. So I worked deserter cases and, and selective service violator, violator cases for my first year. It was a probationary year. Then I was assigned to Miami, and that's where I worked some really uh, interesting uh, cases. For a long time, I worked car theft ring conspiracies where our cars were being stole, stolen in Newark and New York area and transported to southern Florida, and the identities were vehicle identification numbers were being changed. and. Then they were being sold in the Cuban community there in, in Miami around Southwest 8th Street area and through there. And then a lot of them were being shipped down to the islands, uh, the uh, Dutch West Indies and, and areas like that, South America. But then I started working uh, other cases involving organized crime. I worked the Jimmy Hoffa investigation. I participated in the arrest of the man who we think orchestrated Mr. Hoffa's death a man by the name of Anthony Provenzano, Tony Pro for short, and I participated in his arrest. And, and I had the first RICO violation in southern uh, Florida involving uh, several individuals that were taking over the drug trade in, in, the, in Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, and so I worked that for quite a while. And after being there for about seven years, I was transferred to Portland, Oregon. And while in Portland, I was assigned to work timber theft investigations with the U.S. Forest Service out in the Mount Hood National Forest. Big difference between organized crime in Miami and working the, the forest of, uh, of Oregon. And I worked uh, bank robberies, a lot of bank robbery cases and, and uh, in the Portland area. We had the sec probably the second highest rate per capita of bank robberies in any place in the United States next to L.A. I was called a, to serve as a bishop in the Mormon Church, or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, in the early 1970s while I was in Miami. And uh, that was a great honor and great responsibility. And I would find that uh, wearing the two hats often presented some interesting challenges. Um, on one occasion, I, I performed a marriage, and not long after that, I arrested a bridegroom and not the same young man, thankfully, but another person. And uh, experiences like that. One time I was on the stand presiding in a church meeting before my congregation, and somebody came in from the back of the congregation waving for me to come up, come immediately, and there was somebody stealing tools out of the pick the back of the pickup of one of the members of my congregation. So I had to chase this guy through the neighborhood, you know, uh, in my suit and my you know, tie flapping through the air. Finally got the tools back. Different things like that made it interesting. When the publisher published the book, they, they have a certain number of people or uh, that are models that they can choose from that are in the, probably sort of a catalog. So they picked out this guy because he looked a little bit like me. And uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people think that, that I'm more handsome than this guy. <laughs> Although this uh, gun you see here is a Beretta and uh, the FBI agents don't carry Berettas, they carry Glock 40s today. When I was in the Bureau, they carried Six Hours and they carried, uh, you know, other kinds of semi-automatic handguns and also uh, revolvers. He has the finger inside the trigger guard. We never do that. That's a no-no. Well, some of, the, some of the programs are pretty good. They, they get pretty close, but others uh, are, are just too streamlined and, and uh, everything happens too easily, like getting a search warrant where it might take uh, me several hours to get a warrant. They can get one, you know, just like that. Or getting a, a what we call a Title III for a wiretapping. Generally, that takes a long affidavit with a lot of investigation going into it before you can ever just get an uh, authorization for a Title III or a wiretap case. 
And we, but but in you know in the movies and in television they just get them like that, just like it's nothing. So it's it's pretty unrealistic uh, in many ways. And yet there are some some areas that it's it, it gets close. But since I've already lived them, it's not as interesting to me. <laughs> comes down to one person, a very well-organized wife, a very dedicated <laughs> wife that really knew how to spend quality time with our children and would always uh, uh, let them know where dad was and, and, and what I was doing. Um, I did have quite a bit of time with my children. As a matter of fact, I arranged to go to most of their ball games and their functions and, uh, and uh, we had a good quality time when, were we, when we were together. And they all turned out to be great kids. They all, you know, they're all college educated and they're all active in their church duties and, and they're raising their children. I have 22 grandchildren. They're all doing a really good job that way. 1998, I had 30 years and four months in the organization at the time. Wow. I had 20 years in as a SWAT team member and 30 years as a special agent investigator. My lecture for various cruise lines. Right, and I, I'm authoring my, I, I published my first book, the one that you saw. There's 37,000 copies that have sold since it was released in August of this year in six months, so it's pre doing pretty good. That's pretty good. My second book is a work of uh, fiction, but it's based on historical fact, and it's going to be about the borders, the problem on the southern borders with drug cartels, and with Ill illegal immigration issues along the Mexican border. Um, and I go into a lot of research and, and, and fact and, and concern there because that's a huge concern for me, the porous nature of our southern borders, and I don't believe that we're doing enough to keep it safe and secure. It could be cartels and combinations. Uh, it could be fruits of the field. I'm kind of going back and forth between uh, two different titles, but. It'll be on my website uh, soon, www.mikemcpheters.com. If you want a good look at the FBI from the inside, uh, how relationships are among, between, among agents and children and spouses and, and, how we, and, and, and between each other, uh, read my book. Uh, if you want to find some real action-packed stories about my work with the, with the uh, mob, and uh, with organized crime and with uh, uh, working drug cartels, bank robberies, uh, kidnappings, extortions, a shootout that I had in Elgin, Oregon. Uh, if you want to read some good, interesting reading, check out the book. It's called Agent Bishop, True Stories from an FBI Agent Moonlighting as a Mormon Bishop. Thanks very much to have today.